Welcome to round four, game two. This is myself, Patrick Holland, on the left with that very colorful playmat against Charlie Tan on the right with his frosty, frosty dragon mat from World of Warcraft. We got this starting at 2020, although I expect the life totals to change at some point in this game. <laughs> we have a spike shot on turn one. And we'll play a swamp to start. Charlie's going to pay two. Hmm. Play a Shrine of Burning Rage. And get in there. And I go down to 19 from an attack from that Spike Shot Elder. So let me ask you guys, viewers, if you're going to be watching in the comment section, tell me what you think of this new meta from you playing it. What do you think of Shrine of Burning Rage? And what do you think of Spike Shot Elder over Grim Lava Mancer? Or would you run those together? What do you think is better, Grim Lava Mancer? or spike shot or do you think they can coexist in the same deck let me know in the comments I'd like to hear about it and uh the best answer i think i'll put in well can't really say best answer but uh the most concise and uh to the point i'll end up putting in our uh, next week's videos and response to so it looks like in my hand right now i have a batter skull a doom blade Drawn to a land. I believe I was contemplating Doomblade at end of turn over there. Four mana in on the board. And I'm not sure if I have a fifth, but if I do, a batter skull will be coming down, I can assure you, on the pre on the following turn. Uh, judging by my hand motions, I seem sort of upset with uh the events that transpired. However, I did top deck a land, so I don't know why I'm that mad. Unless I'm just sitting on tons of land. But even then... I don't know. Another shrine. Doomblade that. End of turn draw. Five mana for a Bata Skull. Yep, and that comes down with some authority. That'll put some pressure on Charlie to get moving on his damage. And if he wants to split that damage up to a batter skull to get it off the board, and if he has enough burn to get him there and uh, stabilize, because batter skull is reusable. Um, people were talking about how after Stoneforge was gone, batter skull wasn't really, wasn't really all that. It's finding its place in certain decks as a control um, or a mid range that's just gonna weather the storm against uh, red. It comes down a turn earlier than batter skull, so it can still see play in the same deck. Or you can replace Worm Coil overall in the first game. You can run two Batter Skulls, lowering your mana cost considerably, um, while also increasing uh, threat density for your lower uh, creatures. Equipping that to a uh, Snapcaster, making it a 6-5 with Vigilance, with Lifelink. Um, that's pretty threatening. So I'm going to go with two Lifelink threats, apparently, and drop a Worm Coil, in which case Charlie should be very upset at this point. So he's going to start doing some damage, getting uh, me down to 17, proliferating his counters up on those shrines, because at this point he really needs it. Never mind against a red deck, I wouldn't want to be facing down a batter skull and a worm coil against uh, any deck. <laughs> because any deck can run those cards. So, Charlie's going to mull over decisions very carefully at this point. I can only imagine myself in this position being extremely confident. Even if he gets rid of a batter skull, um, I can always just uh, equip that batter skull to worm coil and have a 10-10 vigilant worm coil on board with lifelink and death touch, which is gross. And also, a uh, deduction that I have when playing Solar Flare, I wasn't hitting my draw nearly as much as I was when I'm now that I'm playing Black Blue. You should uh, see my new Black Blue list. I'll have a video for that um, for this week. I'll put myself in a future match to show off this new list where I'm showing off a couple tech cards for this format um, that actually work very, very well uh, against what the meta is right now, uh, especially with Kessig being as prevalent as it is. Um, 
I'll let you guys in on one of those tech cards right now. Um, it was from M12. It was blue. It costed five mana. And it's our new big Jace. Uh, Jace Memory Adept. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys run it. Some lists have, some lists haven't. Uh, I definitely like this as a alternate win condition, seeing that it also teams up with um, Nefalia Drown Yards, giving your mill more authority if you can drop it. I'm not saying you have to run two, I'm not saying you have to run three. One can be perfectly fine for the deck because you don't want to have them in multiples almost at any point in time unless you're facing down aggro. And even then, only at four counters and not gaining anything off that zero ability, you don't really want to have them staring down aggro. You're going to build them 20 cards and they're going to hit you for 20 life if they win quicker. So Jace Memory Adept, I feel, is definitely a viable option at this point in the format and against the meta. If you can hold off until turn 5 and get that in against Wolf Run, um, you can start milling a lot of good things off that they can't green sun and, um, effectively if you hit their targets. It, it is a big if, but generally you can weather the storm against that deck if the, nothing gets too crazy. If they're hitting all their stuff without, you know, the ramp, then they're just going to get there. That's just what the deck will do. That's what any deck will do. But early game, you want to keep those counter spells lined up. Keep them off mana. Keep them off Garrick, because Garrick is actually extremely big. Don't underrate Garrick. But back to the match. Charlie's still sitting on three land. Handful of gas staring down... Uh, 4, 10, 13 life gain on the board. Slagstorm takes care of 3 of it. And then a Geist Flame, but there's really nothing else. And Charlie concedes, showing me what he, uh... What he did inside in with the Into the Cores... At least what I believe those are into the cores. <laughs> because of how silly that goes. But I mean, you can't really see an all artifact hand coming in against coming in against you. Especially in this deck. Because if I don't have two artifacts on board at any given time. It's a dead card in your hand where you could have burn. So I'll take this round, round four uh two oh. Bumping my record up to 3-1, and one, going into round 5, where I will play Cory Patient and lose to Pod. Or did I win? One of the weeks I won, one of the weeks I lost in the last round against Cory. But follow along, guys. Thank you for subscribing.